So welcome all of you to Agility with Alignment, aligning your stakeholders around what really matters. So as a topic, this is something really close to my heart because it really reflects my true identity as an enterprise agile coach. I am Jana Liana Gay from Sri Lanka, serving as an enterprise agile coach to an organization called Virtusa. I support leadership architecting agility with clarity, alignment, and confidence. And also, I am the co-founder of Personal Agility Sri Lanka chapter. We formed this chapter with a mission to inspiring people to achieve what really matters through self-leadership. That's why this topic around alignment is so close to me and I'm so excited to share the gift of alignment with you all. So let's get started. Our lineup for the day is quite simple. We're gonna explore on what and why around alignment and a simple case study on helping stakeholders to discover and align on what really matters how we supported a group of senior stakeholders to understand and align on what really matters. And then we introduce a simple tool to initiate a conversation on what really matters. So I invite you to download the stakeholder canvas. If you go to my session, there's a small icon where you can download this uh, editable Word document on stakeholder canvas. Keep it all with you. And let's see if we get a chance to explore how we really use it. Okay. And please feel free to share your uh, questions, clarifications over chat. I have my uh, moderator here, Devran. He's supporting me with the any questions are there. So please feel free to pause and ask any questions. Okay. So let's get started with alignment. Not a bookish definition, but what is alignment to you? What is alignment? Anyone like to share what is alignment? You can share uh, over the chat. Anybody who wants to share their thoughts on alignment? Yes. Okay, so I'm going to share an example, which will help you to gather your thoughts on what is alignment. Is this something, this sentences, these phrases are something close to you? Something familiar? What is this? We have got an answer. Harmony in thought is alignment. Wow, yes. Harmony in thoughts. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. So is this, I'm sure this is something very close to all of you, right? Because around almost 20 years ago, almost 20 years ago, 17 people, 17 people from different backgrounds, different opinions, different professions came together for a significant course. They talked together, they played, they relaxed, they ate, but end of the day, they worked on a very significant task that is discovering and defining the values and principles behind agile software development and what emerged was the agile manifesto so unless unless that alignment was not there back in 20 years on that historical day we may not have agile manifesto today we may not be having and celebrating the Agile NCR with all these wonderful, enthusiastic leaders around Agile. So that's, in putting on simple words, that's the alignment is like trying to come to a common ground. To explain further, what does it mean to be aligned is when two or more people agree on what really matters two or more people agree on what really matters, their decisions will pull into the same direction. Okay, so that's uh, about alignment. Okay, so 
it's very important to understand why alignment, whether it's a personal alignment or at the team alignment or at the organizational alignment, why alignment is important. You can share it, you can speak out, unmuting yourself, or you can put it in the chat. I would love to hear why alignment is important. Yes, we love to see your ideas. Please put your ideas on the chat window. Why alignment is important. Why alignment is important. Anyone want to share why alignment? Because I believe today we are gathered in Agile and CR is also because alignment. We are aligned that we, we want to live, love, and learn Agile. That's why we are here. So we love to see your, uh, your views on why alignment is important. Until you gather your thoughts, I would ask a question from you. Okay. So we have got one response from Anurag. He says, uh, to create shared understanding towards a common goal. Exactly. To, to have a shared understanding on common goal. That's wonderful. Thanks. Thanks, Anurag. And so for us to... Mm -hmm. One from Rituraj, he shared, shared and a common understanding, the same thing. Exactly. Exactly. That's, that's great. So for us to better dig into this situation on alignment, importance of alignment, I have a small activity for you all. So I'm going to share this uh, Mentimeter link. Okay. Mentimeter link with you all. What you could do is, so think about the, your current department or the organization. Select the top three statements. Select top three statements that best describe your department or the organization. So there are too many meetings and overload of emails. Decisions making take too long and very uh, important, priorities are not clear, squeaky wheels gets the grease, and making changes are difficult due to lack of clarity and friction. Majority of teams work in silos. There's lack of clarity of responsibility and lack of empowerment at the lower levels. So I'm gonna share this link with you all. Let's take two answer. So put top three, top three statements which best describe your department and organization. Okay, I'm going to put it in the chat. Hope you got the link now I just shared in the chat. So let's take I'm going to time box for two minutes. And let's see what uh, we will come up with. Okay. So two minutes start now. So the link has been shared with everyone on the chat. Yes. Starting two minutes. So think about your organization and select the, the top three statements that describe your department or the organization. Everyone is requested to please share their thoughts on the link shared on the chat. Yes, we are getting answers. You have one more minute. So keep answering. If you want to first think about your organization and put it. Yes, so 30 seconds more.
last 10 seconds. Okay, let's see what we have got. So the symptoms, right? So top three or four symptoms that you could observe. Uh, Decision-making take too long. There's lack of clarity of responsibility. There's lack of empowerment at lower levels and priorities are not clear. Speaky wheels get the grief, okay? So these are the symptoms because the questions that I asked are the symptoms of a misaligned department or an organization. Okay, so this is what happens when, when there is lack of alignment in your department or the organizations. Decision making is very painful, lack of clarity of responsibility, priorities is at, at a chaos and lack of empowerment. Okay, so that is why the alignment is important. Let me go back to my uh, presentation. Okay, so, so why, so in, in summary, then why alignment? So if you have alignment, it improves in your department or an organization, it improves the speed, steering capability, safety and sustainability. What does that mean? Speed means you have better clarity on direction, such as our highest priority is to satisfy customer through early and continuous delivery of valuable software. It's not just something put it in a nice post and there, but it, they, the organizations try to live this through their leadership to the teams, to entire organization, because there's a clarity in the direction. And the steering capability, what does that mean? Ability to pivot, ability to inspect and adapt with less friction. That's why we say welcome changing requirements even late in the development. If you want to give that competitive advantage to the customers of, uh, of the change and rapid changes in the market and industry, then we need to have the steering capability, which is coming through alignment. And safety and sustainability, what does that mean? When teams feel, when teams have clarity, they understand they are contributing for a bigger cause beyond their functional limits. Like I'm a developer, I'm a QA, I'm a BA, I, I do my work and I get my, uh, I, I find more defects and then I'm productive. Rather than that, if they are aligned to a better cause from the cascading from the organization, the teams are more aligned and more motivated, right? So that's why we need alignment. So in a one word, in that case, right why alignment we can say for us to bring the agility we need alignment whether it's a personal level agility or it's an organization level agility we need alignment okay so what needs to be aligned now let's go to the organization level what really needs to be aligned in an organization again i share the stage with you all please share what needs to be aligned in an organization you can put in the chat or you can unmute yourself and share with us what need to be aligned. Please share your uh, thoughts on what needs to be aligned in the chat. Okay, so my view, this is my view, and I would love to hear your view as well. So my view, uh, which inspired from the McKenzie 7S framework is what needs to be aligned in an organization are the shared values, strategy, structure, systems, styles, staff, and skills. This is a 7S framework you can go through and read. I'm sure you know this already. So if these things are in alignment, right which means we can achieve this speed steering capability and stability uh, sustainability so what do you mean by strategy it's your business model how you be unique what is your unique journey and how you really uh, realize your vision and mission structure how your teams are organized how what is the the, the hierarchy what is the structure systems are the processes tools policies infrastructure styles are the leadership styles staff, the people, their mental models, attitudes, and skills are the capabilities that we want to have. 
and the final the shared values. So because of that, they have categorized actually these seven SS into two categories, uh, hard elements and soft elements. So hard elements are the strategy, structure and systems, which we can, it is tangible, we can see it in an organization. Whereas, which is something more hard to understand and discover are the shared values, skills, staff and styles, because they are in at the bottom of the uh, culture iceberg. Okay, so this is uh, where the alignment is need to happen. Okay, let's take an example. Let's take an example. So SpaceX. So the SpaceX was formed with a mission to reduce space transformation, uh, train, space transportation costs to enable the colonization of Mars. So with that mission, they build reusable, powerful, affordable starships to fulfill this mission. So the important thing here is that for them to fulfill this mission, they have embraced this mission, living and breathing this mission throughout the organization. That is where the alignment is created. So various sources uh, talk about how they align around this mission. One thing is their strategy. So if we look at the, the SpaceX business model, it maximizes the simplicity, low cost and reliability. You can read this, I have shared the references. You can read it's very nice article on their business model. And also Elon Musk have uh, reiterated that their company's goal at this stage, at the time this article was written, is not to maximize the profit, but instead revolutionize the space technology. What does that mean? It shows the customer centricity. It shows the alignment to the mission because it, it's not to say that their cash, uh, cash flows are negative, but their primary goal is to build affordable, low cost space transit profits, but the goal is to fulfill their mission. So their strategy is aligned to their mission, what really matters to them. And if you look at the structure, if they talk about they're having very flat organization structures and encourage autonomous teams. Not only that, their staff and skills, they recruit young, highly talented and non-unionized workforce to fulfill this mission, this structure and strategy. And finally, their systems. There's a very nice article again on faster decision making is how the fast decision making is enabled uh, through very short transparent supply chain and 85% of manufacturing happen in house and simple proven design and rapid innovation emphasis for the R&D. Now this is very important, faster decision making. Now you know in a couple of years that we're gonna have a 4G network uh, in Moon as well, okay? But think about certain organizations, not every organization, but think about um, certain organizations. How long it take to move a particular laptop or a machine from one flow to the other flow? Technically 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, but the number of approvals you need to raise and waiting for the approvals to be completed and really physically take it to the next flow, how long it take? How long it really take to um, approve a purchase order in an organization. Now we really have to think about this deeply because if you're talking about the innovation and rapid change, responding to the rapid change, but if your processes are really misaligned, then there is, there is no proper alignment. So this is something for you to think about. And I have not experienced whether this is true in SpaceX, but I can share my story how this alignment was really useful for me and how uh, I, with a group of agile coaches, supported the stakeholders. That's the case study is all about. So before I move to the case study, are there any questions until now? If there are, do we have any questions at, at the moment? Please share your uh, questions on the chat window and Janani can answer those. Yeah. Okay, so if there are no questions at the moment, I will move on to the next one on the case study. So 
This is a case study on my, 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 my own experience, how a group of enterprise agile coaches collaborated to bring alignment on what really matters to the stakeholders in an agile transformation. So I give a bit of background on this case study. So this was a company that develops a market software for clinical trials that this picture is about. So challenge, so I, I will not explain the whole scenario here, but for, for simplicity, the challenge was around the productivity. They had concerns around the productivity and they want to improve the productivity. And initial assignment was their request was to have do an agile maturity assessment and then followed by an agile transformation. This is how everything got started. Now, key stakeholders, the primary stakeholders we met were from heads of product management, heads of PMO, engineering and technology, security and compliance. There was a huge uh, role played by security and compliance because they have a very stringent process and need for compliance because they were in a clinical trial um, uh, engagement, right, in the business of clinical trials. So our challenge, right, we, we clearly observed that Product and engineering was more oriented on innovation. They were trying new things and they want to speed up the things, whereas the PMO was more looking at the control on whether it's the estimate or whether it's the process or whether it's the, the getting things done, they wanted more control, where the security and compliance is more looking at the stability because they have a stringent process and documentation on, on compliance. So they really don't want much uh, changes happening in, in there. So our challenge is, hey, wait a minute, what really matters to these stakeholders end of the day? So this was very important for us. So we knew though the answer, the request was to do a agile maturity assessment. We felt that it could create a chaos and much more confusion uh, because if we simply jump into an agile maturity assessment because a maturity assessment could really measure the hard elements, the structure, the strategy, and the systems, a little bit of systems, even still not the same entire thing. But most importantly, the shared values, the staff, the skills, uh, styles, leadership styles, it's very difficult to be measured through a maturity assessment, and especially given index, uh, your shared values in terms of shared values, this is where it's your maturity. It's not that so simple. And you know that very well. So as an enterprise agile coaches, our role, right? We wanted to create awareness, clarity, and alignment on what really matters so that the leaders, so that the leaders, the stakeholders have confidence to make choices around what really matters. And they can have the confidence to form a fellowship you see this picture, I hope you really remember this picture in, in, in Lord of the Rings, right? All the you know senior people, the heroes were fighting and end of the day, the product came as what really matters is take the ring to its destination, right? So our role was something like that. We wanted to bring the sense of awareness, clarity and alignment on what really matters. So they build confidence to make choices on what really matters to them and form a, a alliance or a fellowship on this uh, on this matter okay so the journey was very inspiring journey starting with stakeholder interviews lots of diversions and conversions on what really matters and seven s seven s that i explained and very important activity on visualization on alignment on these different different levers and then forming the fellowship and many inspiring steps towards the agility okay so I will not take you through everything, but the first three steps, because it's more around the stakeholder alignment. Now for that, we for the stakeholder interviews, this is, was at the very early stage of the engagement. Before we do the agile maturity assessment, we use this uh, personal agility systems stakeholder canvas. So personal agility systems is a institute inspiring people to uh, deliver, discover and deliver what really matters. You can download this web, the document that I have sent is already downloadable and you can go through more details in the personal agility systems website, which I will be sharing. So it's a simple tool to initiate a conversation on what really matters to a stakeholder. Okay, so very simple. It has questions on the questions were categorized around who, 
why and outcomes right so under the who we talk about the stakeholder the goals and objectives and what really matters what really matters to the stakeholder why aspect what are the challenges and impediments risks concerns and fears the personal fears and frustrations and finally the outcomes definition of awesome sometimes a stakeholder may not be able to simply share in terms of numbers what he really looking for so we asked what is the definition of awesome we visualized we help him to visualize okay when you achieve this particular change improvement how your project how your department or organization would look like what would you have differently when you have this improvement or what would your teams have differently when you have this improvement so we really helped the stakeholder to create a visualization on the awesome the definition of awesome not the definition of done but the definition of awesome of the particular improvement and the support now this is very important how can i as an enterprise agile coach uh, make you uh, help help to make this come true because there is a level and limit and any agile coach can do right so it's very important to help that clarity what is the role clarity help myself and help the stakeholder to understand what my role right and the what next okay so working with a personal agility stakeholder canvas so when can we use this is not only for an agile transformation you can use it with any other engagement that's why i invite you to explore this and i have been exploring with many different engagements at the beginning of a project or assignment when a significant change or direction is planned when you need to reestablish the trust with the key person or stakeholder pre sales initial assessments so you can try out exploring different scenarios and why use the canvas right mostly the most important is to build the trust with the stakeholder and for us to understand as a as a coach or a consultant or a business partner to understand the complexities of situation and identify the person i have used this also when when i wanted to create understand the persona profiling sometimes we need to empathize on what really matters to the particular person what are his needs and pains then also i have used this uh, this canvas and introduce your concern to the stakeholders sometimes it's important that i explain my concern also to the stakeholder especially in a, like a merge business acquisition it's important to share both um, you know concerns and fears and the help the stakeholders to figure out what really matters to them okay so tips for using the personal uh, task stakeholder canvas very important is that uh, better if you do the time boxing like about 45 to 60 minutes and one important skill that you need is the active listening so 95% of time you are listening right and create safety at the beginning so establishing that trust and psychological safety is key for the stakeholder to open up the from the questions the powerful questions that you are going to probe and also the the key is not just these nine questions sometimes you have to model the change the way you ask the question based on the scenario based on the reaction of the stakeholder so you should have mastered like probing powerful questions that is important and this is primarily for one on one interviews but i have experience of doing this with a team at a team inception also so i invite you to explore and see and take notes very important and one important thing is that you confirm your understanding time to time paraphrase rephrase and ask have i understood this correctly that is important and after confirming it's also you can inject some of your thoughts as well which will uh develop the next steps you can share but it's not a selling it should not be a selling it should not be a hard convincing or it should not be an argument but very subtle way you can put through your thoughts as well which will develop the next steps of this engagement of this conversation okay so example so i'm going to share an example how the stakeholder canvas was used uh, as a handshake so this engagement that i mentioned 
right? So they asked for an agile maturity assessment. They said there's an issue on productivity. So there were lots of, you see in this picture, there were lots of other initiatives also happening in the organization. So we felt, we, we clearly felt that we need, there needs some clarity. The stakeholders need some clarity around what really matters, okay? So this is an example, not the real data, but the, the conversation was with this product owner, chief product owner, right? So you see the first question is on who, the who is the stakeholder. Second question is on main goals and objectives. What are the main goals and objectives, right? So ask, what do you really want to achieve through this engagement? What do you want to achieve at the end of the day? And then third is question is challenges and impediments. These challenges are mainly around the strategy, structure and systems, right? What is the uh, challenge that you, that, that's really stopping you to achieve this goal? So they mentioned, uh, so first of all, the main goal was to increase the customer base and uh, improve time to market. And the third question was like, what are the challenges and impediments? And they shared, he shared, lack of defined process to involve customers early and poor role definition, poor role definition. Now it's important, sometimes when you ask this question, you have to ask again, when you say poor role definition, what does that mean, okay? So it's just not that asking what is the challenge and then write it down. So you should be able to probe the powerful questions. When you say poor role definition, what does that mean, right? And the fourth question was risks, concerns, and fears. Now we are coming from more emotional side. The challenges and impediments were like things that he can see, he can, the, the tangible challenges, whereas risks, concerns, fears are more on emotional, the personal side of uh, risk and concerns and fears. So he said lack of human-centered design skills of the team members, uh, teamwork in silos and lack of innovation. And one fear he mentioned is his own priorities. Forget about the team, his own priorities are dis uh, distributed across the various initiatives. So prioritizing this initiative is a challenge. He need a very good business case for him to initiate, initiate uh, human-centered design across the teams, okay? And the frustrations, he mentioned, I, I, I go mad when changing requirements and priorities by customer, and especially when the team is not responding to them, right? And then I help him to define, okay, if I can snap my fingers. Now he already shared his goal, challenges and risk and fears. So I asked like, if I can snap my fingers and all of a sudden everything changes, how would that look like? So that's very important to help the person to create a mental model on, on the definition of awesome. He said, my team have solid understanding of the customer. The discovery is more meaningful and I can, it helps me to better prioritize and our MVPs are coming soon to the production. Then finally I asked, okay, what really matters? The eighth question, what really matters? End of the day with all these things, end of the day, what really matters to you, okay? Because sometimes you may not be able to say everything in, in numbers. Sometimes you may say, end of the day, what really matters is improve the customer engagement clear expectations setting through contracts or customer engagements and efficient change management process. Then also I had the conversation on what support I can give, how I can be resourceful in this engagement. There, when he proposed certain things, I can show my boundaries as an enterprise agile coach as well, right? And the what next questions. So this is a very simple example on, on uh, the stakeholder canvas conversation that we had. And you see that when we ask the questions as an interviewer, when I ask the questions, I make sure the, 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 the eighth, second and third questions are more on the hard elements. We never said that I'm not going to ask a question about strategy or structure, but we ask the questions in a way we get answers for strategy, structure, and systems. Whereas the other questions are more from the, the soft elements, which is from more emotional, personal feelings around the, around the challenge, okay? So what happened was after this having, so there were about three to four enterprise agile coaches interviewing th around 30 plus stakeholders. Every day we were coming together and 
put it into a one place, all these our findings in terms of what really matters, goals and concerns, right? So we have in one side, we have the seven S's, and the other side, we have the stakeholders that we interviewed, and we try to collate them on what really matters and goals and concerns. Now, this is raw data. <clears throat> what we wanted to do is to try to make sense of our understanding on the seven S's and the what really matters to the stakeholders, okay? Um, and what we did was next was help customers to understand what does it mean to be an agile organization? What does it mean to be an agile organization and importance of alignment? So we didn't want a big book uh, to explain that because Agile Manifesto clearly explained that. An Agile organization is a learning and transforming because it says we are uncovering better ways of developing, which means an Agile organization is a learning and transforming. We are doing it and helping others to do it, which means collaborative. And finally, we have come to value, which means together we have come to value means we are aligned. So we help them to understand an agile organization is learning and transforming, collaborative and aligned. Then we also introduce the agile manifesto in a, in a creative manner rather than simply an agile training. We help these executives to understand the agile manifesto as a mindset which guides the leaders to realign the organization for high performance. Because if you see these 12 principles, nicely group, can be grouped into the seven S's. So you see Agile Manifesto is like in an organization level, it's, there are some values and principles which helping the leaders to realign themselves for high performance. And they really liked this interpretation of the Agile Manifesto. And finally, we also uh, presented, now we have done the uh, stakeholder interviews. We had made sense on what, what really matter, matters to the stakeholders and we presented. Okay, based on our stakeholder interviews we had so far, this is our current understanding what really matters to you. And uh, these are your concerns around the strategy, structural systems, shared values and etc. That was a very alarming moment. That's a very eye-opener for them. Everyone was talking about the productivity, but 30 different opinions. So we were able to bring that view for them because they were talking about one problem, uh, in improving productivity and do a geometry assessment. But when we put this, now they understood, oh my God, even it was the productivity. For me, the productivity is something else. For him, the productivity is something else. So this was a very eye-opening moment for them. And after a couple of uh, divergence and convergence uh, sessions, they were able to really say what really matters to them, which was very important for, for us to take uh, move forward in the agile transformation. And also we helped them to visualize the level of alignment. We asked them, okay, this is what really matters to you. Look at your what really matters, how aligned your strategy, how aligned your shared values, how aligned your skills towards what really matters. Not only towards what really matters, are they aligned with each other? For example, your strategy could be innovation, whereas your processes can be looking for more control, right? So it's not always bad. Sometimes the paradox exists in organizations, right? But we need to be aware of that, okay? So you can see that we help them to really visualize how they are aligned in the, the seven S's. We didn't exactly use the same names because they were comparable with different names, but we were mindful we are talking about these seven S's. Okay. Janani, so, uh, sorry to interrupt you. We have five minutes left uh, for this presentation. Of course, of course. Just uh, to take in three minutes. Yeah. So, um, so likewise, the alignment was very important. And not only that, we did a couple of activities like value stream identification, balance scorecard, and culture mapping. Okay. So, the most important, the pressing point was. After this kind of visualization sessions, they were able to come up with a common statement, like a manifesto. We believe today what really matters for us in this project or in this initiative is this. For that, today we have challenges, fears, and frustrations of one, two, three. We know we have achieved our what really matters. 
when we achieved our goal one, two, three, and our definition of awesome. So this was the key for us to, before going for an agile uh, maturity assessment. Because the outcome was when we did the agile, agile maturity assessment, the stakeholders really heard them. Because when simply say the sprint planning was not effective, what does that mean to a head of technology? What does that mean to a, a, a head of innovation? What does that mean to security and compliance? Without doing this alignment, this conversation, these numbers or this data may not mean anything for, the, for these key stakeholders. But the outcome was that we were able to create a, a, a coalition, an alliance or a fellowship. And also they understood it's just not a maturity assessment we need to do. We need to build like a coral reef. We need to build an ecosystem of agile capabilities across the organization, which really uh, beyond the pilots, then only they can get the ROI of the uh, agile transformation. Okay, so um, I invite you to explore the uh, stakeholder canvas. I'll be there. I'll be joining the network uh, lounge, so you can really have ask any questions around. And if you want to like practice doing the uh, stakeholder canvas because um, uh, I mean, we, we have a kind of having some technical challenge to go to the breakout rooms. So instead of that, that's why I took time to explain you uh, rather than giving the opportunity for you to do it. But I'll be joining the network lounge. If you have any clarifications and try out the, uh, this canvas, I'll be there. Okay, so I'll skip this one. I was planning to uh, give you uh, opportunity to do this. I skip these slides. So, Finally, what I want to uh, emphasize is that you can't sometimes change the winds when strong winds are there. Sometimes you can't change the winds, but you can adjust your sails to reach your destination. That's how the ships adjust to the uh, respond and adapt to the storms. But for you to do that, the most important thing is that you need to be aligned on common direction on what really matters to you. So I invite you all to explore the personal agility uh, stakeholder canvas and live the alignment in your life as well as your organization. Thank you so much.